Good morning. This is Nancy from Spirit Creations. I am doing my first video, so I'm doing something very simple um, that probably many of you already know. Um, I use painted pages from old books for a, the basis of a whole lot of things and parts to a whole lot of projects. And so I thought I would start with that until I can um, show you some more fun things. Okay, so basically, obviously, pick a book that you are done with or that is bound for the recycle and just simply tear the pages out. I don't care much about the edges. Um, the part that I am most concerned about is the center part. Um, and there's two ways to start. One is that you can use gesso, um, and it, usually I prefer that. However, I seem to have gotten a really um, bad brand of gesso. I usually use gesso from Dick Blick, and I bought some cheaper this time. And when you compare it to, I just did this other set with white acrylic, and you can see that you can still read the whole page. And that isn't really what I want. Um, when you put a top coat of the, on top of this, um, depending on how opaque the paint is, you're still going to be able to read the whole page. And that isn't really what I want for a background. I want the background so that you can still see um, some of the words, but not all of them. Um, and you can do a whole lot of different kinds of coloring and these are the way I like them. You can see the words here but you can't read the page. They're, they're just a muted part of the background. Um, I like that. Okay, now um, if it's not if it's done with the, uh, with the gesso and a paint that's not very opaque you got so much words that it just is distracting from whatever it is that I'm trying to create. So today, since I don't have the gesso that I like, I'm going to just use white acrylic craft paint. Um, if I can get it to come out of the bottle. There we go. Okay, and you know, it's very simple. Just cover the page. I got quite a lot of paint out with that um, blob, so I'm likely to not want quite that much on this page, so I'm going to take some off and put it on another page. And I do try and cover edge to edge because I never know um, what I'm going to be using this paper for at this stage of the game. Okay, and I'm just going to set it aside to dry. Now is the fun part. Now you can mix anything you want. Um, today I have a pink pearl, which I really like the shimmer in this kind of paint. And a light purple or lavender color. Just use whatever you have. Now that went on in one big glob. So I'm going to start out by moving some of that. Okay. In fact, I'm going to put some on my palette get rid of some of that. Okay. And then I just like to mix it up. And that way you get some variation from the two colors. And I still have too much purple.
Okay, now I'm going to add a little more pink because I have this big patch of more purple on that. Alright. I'm going to leave that as it is. I kind of like that. It's got, you can see all the different tones and I like that. Now, I might, on the next one, since we know that I'm going to do it on the palette, and the reason I'm doing it on the palette is because, as you can see on the last one, I didn't have as much control over the paint as what I would have liked to have had. So, I'm going to do this. I'm going to leave the purple on the on the makeup sponge. And I'm doing a circular motion um, right now because I like um, the mixture of the paint that I'm getting. Sometimes I would just do a strip and that gives you a whole different um, layering of the paint. There we go. I like that. That's a very fun color. Okay. The yellow one that I showed you before with all the words coming through, I could go through and put another coat of color on top of this. Um, like, I really like lime green, and I could put another coat of lime green on it. However, um, because I used a paint that I don't like, um, that has um, a high gloss to it. Um, well, this isn't the yellow, but it, this pink is also the same way. It's a high gloss paint, and so it's not good for this project. Um, I, I haven't quite figured out how to use the gloss paints. I um, am so used to using um, flat acrylic paint. Um, and if I want it to pop like this, I'll add something on top of it to make it do that. But in the beginning stages of a project, I really don't want this because it doesn't mix well and it's hard to put color over the top. For some reason, if you put um, something over acrylic paint, a product that's meant to go over acrylic paint then you can paint it other acrylic paint over the top and it's not a problem but this gloss it like the the paint just slides on it and I and I don't like it so I need to be more careful about when I'm grabbing paint All right. let me show you a few things that I use this paper for once I get it made um, I make a lot of tags. Um, this is an M&M package. And on the back side, um, you can see um, the words very clearly. This is one that the paint on the top was not very opaque. And so you can see the words. Um, one of the tricks that I have for dealing with that is to cut it at an angle. Um, and that way, uh, it's not like you're um, got a page of words glued onto something. Um, 
These are um, affirmation cards. They're not finished yet. They need their little things on the corners. But um, the back paper and all of the papers for the, the images have been cut from this paper. Um, and so, and you can, these are um, punches. You can punch it. You can cut it. You can doodle on it. You can see the words on the heart. There you go. Yeah. All right. So, and those of you who've been making tiles, uh, this kind of paper makes awesome tiles and allows you to create on top. And these two were done with um, rubber stamps. And also you can, um, this is one of my personal journal books, and a lot of the images that I use are cut from this paper. Um, and sometimes I use it for background, but um, most of the time I just cut my images from it. So that's a few ways that you can use this paper. Again, in the beginning when you're painting it, you don't need to know that. Just paint the paper. And when you have a pile and you start working on something else, pretty soon you'll be grabbing this paper to use as part of your project. Um, again, this is Nancy from Spirit Creations. I hope this video was helpful to you. And I hope to be bringing you some more projects soon. Take care.